Hello everybody, I'm Lisa with Lisa Cape and Quilts and you might have found my channel by searching on YouTube for t-shirt quilt related content. How to make t-shirt quilts and all the things, right? You might have found me that way. You might have also watched some of my videos and learned that I love using Inkscape to plan out my t-shirt quilt layouts, right? And I work right on the computer uh, and design my t-shirt quilt layouts right on the computer. And many of you have followed in some of my Inkscape tutorials. Many of you have purchased my Inkscape, or not my Inkscape, my quilt grid layouts, right? Here's an example of one of them. But you've reached out to me and you're like, Lisa, do you have a one inch quilt grid? And I don't. <laughs> and the reason being is that the, the grids would be so small on the larger size grids that you would need a magnifying glass in order to lay out all the blocks of your t-shirt quilt. <laughs> so I don't have a one inch quilt grid, but in today's demo, I'm gonna show you how you can customize right in Inkscape and make your own custom grid set and quilt size to whatever you need it to be, right? What's great about my quilt grid sets is that all the math and all the figuring has been done for you. You have five different basic quilt sizes to start from. The grids are already made for you and you can work in paper form and plan out your quilt right on a piece of paper, right? And many of you actually prefer to do that way. But I know I've heard from several of you who have wanted to modify a grid set because you have like one or two more blocks that just don't fit on a throw size uh, grid and you've reached out and you're, you're like Lisa how can I modify and make this quilt size just an inch or two bigger and we've had many talks back and forth about that so in today's Inkscape tutorial I'm going to show you how to create your own right while you can import any of the quilt grid sets into Inkscape and work right with my grid you can also make your own and uh, so I'm gonna pull up Inkscape and we're gonna get you making your own custom grid set if this is something that you wanna learn and you wanna work right on the computer in a custom grid set, right? So uh, I don't know that this video tutorial is gonna be like beginner friendly with Inkscape and, uh, but I'm gonna show you the steps. So when you're comfortable and you've downloaded Inkscape you're ready to do this. You have all the steps here and this video is waiting for you, okay? <laughs> and um, so I just wanna let you know that um, when going into Inkscape, I would have already used my t-shirt quilt planner. You don't have to have this planner, but you need an inventory of your shirts, the logo size, the color. You need to mark each one of your shirts so that you stay organized when you are planning either in paper form or in Inkscape, right? So let's just say we've already done all of the inventory. We have all of that information written down and now it's time to plan our layout. So let me open up Inkscape and show you how I do a custom grid, okay? Without using a grid set, okay. Here we are over on Inkscape and I just opened up a new document here in Inkscape. And the first thing I want to say is that my screen might look totally different than your screen. In all videos up until now when I show Inkscape uh, video tutorials, I'm using an older version, but I have a newer computer now that is faster and beefier that can handle the latest version of Inkscape. But I wanna just say no matter what version of Inkscape you are using, even though our screens might look different, the steps are exactly the same. Okay, so grab a piece of paper and a pen so you can take some notes. No matter what version you're working in, when you open up Inkscape, you're gonna have your piece of paper right in the middle and everything around it is your desktop, right? So let's just say you have your paper on your desk and you're ready to start planning. So the very first thing I'm gonna do is go right up to uh, the very top of the screen and click on file. And what we wanna do is we wanna open up document properties. 
Now when you do, a new box is going to open up. This is your document properties. There's going to be some tabs across the top that you can click on. But by default, display is going to be the first thing that you see. In the display, here's what I want you to do. By default, Inkscape works uh, in formats of millimeters. We're going to change from millimeters to inches, right? Because we've measured all of our logos in inches. We're cutting our blocks out in inches. So format, change that to inches. Under display, that is the rulers that you see at the top and along the side. This is also going to affect um, the measurements of your blocks. By default, it's mi millimeters. We're going to change that to inches. Now that you've changed those two things to inches, we're going to change the actual size of the piece of paper that's on our desktop. In inches, by default, it's 8.268 inches wide and 11.693 inches long. We're going to change this to the size of the quilt that we want to make. So let's just say we want to make a crib size quilt. We're going to change the width to 30 inches. And we're going to change the height to 40 inches. And I'm just making up numbers, right? <laughs> But now this actual piece of paper on our desktop is the true size, 30 inches by 40 inches. You can even change the color of your page, which I like to do a lot because inevitably I have white shirts in, uh, in the mix of all of my shirt logos and I want it to be able to show up on the actual page uh, that I'm working in. So I most of the time will change the page color to a color that I am not going to be using in my quilt. So let's just say in this quilt, I won't have any uh, aqua colored shirts, right? So let's just pick an awkward uh, aqua color. <laughs> and uh, you can change the, the page color, any color you want. If you don't have any white shirts, you could just leave the page as white, right? And you won't run into any problems. We can close that. So now we have a aqua page that we're working with. It's 30 by 40. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on these tabs, the one that says grids. When you do, this is what the box is going to look like. And we're going to click new. So automatically, I don't know if you see that, but it's automatically put a graph paper over my entire desktop. Now by default, that graph is always going to be working in pixels. And so the first thing we're going to do is click on that and change it to inches. And then the only other two things we need to change in this box is the spacing X and the spacing Y. And that is the actual size of the graph paper uh, on your desktop. So let's say you want to work in one inch increments. You change the X spacing to one and the Y spacing to one. And so right behind you, you see those little boxes that your graph paper, those are now increments of one inch. So those are the main changes that I make when first getting started with the um, planning of the quilt, right? So uh, the more you work with Inkscape, the more familiarized you get with all the functions, all the tools, where to find this tool, where to find that tool. Uh, some of the most helpful things you're going to find when planning your quilt in Inkscape uh, is the zoom to page button, right? Right now we are zoomed in to our quilt, but if you look for and you this might be on the top, it might be on the side, depending on what version you're using and how you have your toolbars uh, situated. But if you find the button that says zoom to page, what it does is no matter where you are, when you click that, it's going to bring up the whole quilt right into the middle of your screen and you can see everything. Uh, so let me just show you. Let's say we have a block a t-shirt block 
that is going to measure eight inches by eight inches. And I'm just changing right in the in that toolbar, the width and the height, eight inches by eight inches. And also keep in mind, this is finished inches. When you cut this block, you'll cut it out at eight and a half by eight and a half. But whenever we're designing in either the paper grid set or here on Inkscape, we're working with the finished size, right? We've changed it to eight inches by eight inches. And let's just say that this block here is a white t-shirt with a logo on it. And now when you place that, uh, you're able to actually see the grid lines and you can see the block, right? So let's just say we're going to put that right there. And let's just duplicate that several times. Let's say we have an orange block and a black block. Something else uh, that you might want to um, play around with is the alignment tool, right? And these are things going beyond <laughs> just setting up the basic thing. But what is great about working with the actual size and the page as your um, quilt top is that you can align your blocks according to the page. In your tool bar menu, you'll find the align and distribute. You can open that up and it's going to open up over here. You'll see mine was already open. You can align your blocks several different ways, but if you come to uh, relative to and you change this to page, that makes it really easy if you have a whole bunch of um, blocks selected and you want them at the very top of your page you can play around with the different placements of um, the align tool in this box right so there they all are you can click on all of them and align them right to the very top uh, you could also say let's say i want this black uh, block to go right underneath of the orange block you could change it back to last selected and you can center it and put it right below. So I want you to play with the align functions while you're laying things out. You're going to find that really helpful to align everything up nice and straight. Um, and the zoom to page button. So just like that, we see the full view of our quilt. Now, naturally, um, the first thing I would do is go through and make all of my blocks right so if i had three white blocks i would create those look at my inventory and number each one of these blocks and then group that together and then move it onto the page right um, i do have videos working in inkscape and getting everything to fit and uh, you can check that out i'll put a link down in the description box below really i just wanted in this video to focus on setting up a custom grid size and a custom quilt size. Now what's really great about this is let's say um, you have all of your blocks you know like this and your quilt size that you originally thought would work is going to be a tad bit too small. You can always go back into file and document properties and increase your quilt size right here in the computer, right? So we could change it from 30 inches to 34 inches. And what that does is it adds four more inches uh, to the right. And so there you go. You could um, have a couple more inches to work with very easily versus starting all over from scratch, right? So let's say you're working in Inkscape and you have to leave, you have to stop for the day, or uh, you have all of your blocks lined up and um, you're ready to save everything, right? What you can do is you can go to File and select, not new, <laughs> File, Save As, and I like to save my file right on the desktop and you can call it whatever you want. And the save as type, you leave that as plain SVG, right? We're going to go ahead and save this. Now, 
how you can work with this the next time you're ready to work on your design or you're actually ready to look at it and to start working uh, with your shirts and start sewing your shirt blocks, right? Let's just say that today is a new day. We open up Inkscape. Of course, it's going to look like this by default, right? We can go right back into um, File. We're going to Import. We're going to find the file we've been working on, current t-shirt quilt, and we're going to open that up. And we just click OK. Now I'm going to zoom out. Here are my blocks. This is when you have to go back in and repeat the steps, right? So File, Document Properties. We're going to change this to Inches. We're going to change this to Inches. We're going to create a grid, New. We're going to change Pixels to Inches. X spacing is one inch. Y spacing is one inch. And the display, we had 34 inches wide. And what was it? 40 inches long. I forget now. <laughs> and there we go. So this is a good example to show you. So let's say you have uh, white blocks in your t-shirt layout when you move them onto your grid they disappear that's why I like to go in and change the page color so we'll go back into document properties okay there we go I was having a little glitch file document properties and we can change the color of uh, our grid there we go so now our white blocks will look or show up on our page, right? And anytime you stop for the day and you come back to work and you import your current working file, it's going to be grouped together. So if you click on the orange block, it is grouped with all of your other blocks. They all move together. Before you start working, click on any of those blocks and then right click and hit ungroup. And that separates each one of the different sections and you can start working with your layout. Now I hope that that was helpful. Uh, yeah, let me come back. <laughs> that might have been a whole bunch of information overload, right? So my first suggestion is to if you're interested and you want to learn designing it on the computer versus the paper form or you have a custom size in mind and the grid sets not going to work download Inkscape get in there and start clicking on you're not going to mess anything up the worst thing that's going to happen is you just close it and not save the file and start all over again right figure out where all the features are your biggest tools are going to be your align and distribute your zoom to page um, yeah and make your own custom grid set and start planning out your layout right okay I hope that this was really helpful for you if you have questions you can leave them down in the comment section below just know I'm I am honestly I am really slow at answering questions with all the stuff that I have in the different places that I am um, the easiest way to get your question answered honestly is to go over to the creative crew and post your question there because I see that really fast but you can leave your question down here just know that I'm kind of slow at getting to the questions here on YouTube and I am so sorry <laughs> sometimes I wish like I could duplicate myself and have someone uh, that knows the answers to the questions but do know that I do see your comments down in the description down below and I try to be fast answering those questions as fast as I possibly can okay everybody uh, bundle up it's cold outside and uh, I guess I'll see y'all on Friday bye